this. Watch Holland score nine goals in a game. There's this house in this neighborhood in New Jersey that actually isn't a house. It's hard to see because it's behind this gate, but if you look at it from above, you'll see that it's actually a really large building. Oh, damn! Kind of looks like a warehouse. It has dozens of air conditioning units, and it's just sitting here among a sea of ordinary suburban homes. All of this is just a facade, hiding this massive building that is a landing station for AT&T, the place where these massive undersea cables that connect the world hit the eastern seaboard. But why are they hiding it? We now know for certain that the U.S. government spies on those cables with the help. This video is called um, Submarine Cables and the Rise of Mass Surveillance. And it's by John Aris. Makes analytical videos about certain phenomena that happen around the world and shit like that. And we're watching it right now. It's crazy. Massive. Companies like at and when according to a leaked map Mr. from the Cal NSA, they I process all the data that they collect somewhere it. in New Jersey in a facility called Pinecone. Lining up these maps points to this secretive disguised building as one of the best candidates for where this surveillance is being processed. Right. But there's a lot more of these hidden buildings around the country. Thanks to leaked NSA documents and some thorough investigative reporting, we now know some of their locations. Like the fake house in New Jersey, these other cable spy facilities what, they the robots in benign, nondescript buildings, avoiding any undue attention along the streets of New York or San Francisco or Dallas. These few hundred cables that connect our world contain an unfathomable amount of data, all of our communication, all of our connections, and it would seem impossible that any government agency would be able to spy on it all. Impossible, that is, if we didn't have solid proof that they do. Huh? So let me tell you the story of the cables that connect our planet and show you that if you can tap into them, you can watch the world, and they have and they've been doing it for a long time. 320 Chat. million records every day. What if some guy pulls up in a submarine and goes to scuba, and they go to the wire and they put a tap on it, and they, they, they cable tap it. What we're talking it. about here is a total revolution of the whole concept of war. They do Collect it all, exploit it all. Now is the moment where I say thank you to the sponsor of today's video. I'm very grateful for sponsors. I wouldn't be able to do this job and make independent journalism if we didn't. And this one, to see all of the lists that you're on. And they address and your phone number off the or these sign up for Incogni and try it out for 30 days. What's it called? It's incogni.com slash Johnny Harris. And you can go over oh, sign up for Incogni and try it out for. We laid the first copper cable across the Atlantic Ocean in 1858. Huh? It connected Ireland to Canada. They sent the first telegram across this wire and it took 18 hours to arrive, which was like light speed back then. The cable broke three weeks later, but even still, it was a huge success. A revolution for a world whose progress hinged on being more and more connected. That's insane. Single cable, only an inch and a quarter thick lies on the ocean bed. The planet would be linked up by many more of these cables draped along the ocean floor. That's allowing really us slow, to call though. people across the world and eventually allowing us to access information through web pages. Yes, I always skip the ads. I always make sure that you, you, people see the code and the ad and the ad itself and I skip it. Okay. It never changed. It never will change unless there's a problem and people send me a DM. It's never been a problem. It's a problem that you are making out of nowhere because of the fucking all the react drama. And honestly, I don't give a fuck hosted on servers far, far away. An online network called Internet. Today, there are 1.4 million kilometers worth of cables linking us all up, and they transfer a ton of data. Like the fastest cables can transfer 224 terabytes per second, and the oh, amount of data here. being sent around the world doubles every two to three years. Unsurprisingly, there's a whole industry dedicated to just laying down these cables and then monitoring them and repairing them when they break. Sometimes they get broken by fishing trawlers or anchors or natural disasters. Sometimes they even get broken by sharks, though that's pretty rare. Damn. But sometimes these cables are broken on purpose. There's this island right off the coast of China, but it technically belongs to Taiwan, the country that China has that looks so vulnerable. to eventually absorb into their own. Needless to say, there's a lot of tension here. And in the last five years, the cables of this little island have 
accidentally been broken 27 times, which is a lot for cables. China denies that they had any part in these 27 accidents. They say it's just an unfortunate fishing or anchor incident, but I'm suspicious. Officials fear that Matsu is just a warning and that internet connections to the whole of Taiwan could be under threat. Sometimes it's unclear who attacks these cables. Like a few years ago, when somebody ripped out a two and a half mile piece of this cable that connects Norway to the island of Svalbard. Other times it's very clear who's cutting the cables. Like when the United States was at war with Saddam Hussein in the 90s and they cut Saddam's cable so that he couldn't communicate. I mean, yeah, cutting the communication cables of your enemy is an old strategy. They were doing that way back in like the American Civil War. But They're the more interesting pretty much. approach to me isn't just sabotage. There's another way that you can use cables to your advantage if you are a great power trying to control things. If you have access to submarine cables, which governments and militaries do, you can scrape through the insulation of this cable. You can splice in another cable and you can duplicate the signal and hear everything your enemy is saying. The British Navy did this to a German submarine cable out here in the middle of the Atlantic during World War I. The Germans suspected that they were being listened to. That's pretty so crazy. So they sent all their communication as complex codes. But the British had very smart code breakers and they were able oh. to decrypt all of this the and discover a lot of Germany's secrets. And they discovered this secret the machine. plan that Germany had to ally with Mexico and the, invade the United States. Enigma. This is one reason why the US ended up joining the war. And it all happened because of submarine cable tapping. World War II took cable tapping to a whole new level. A more connected world meant more opportunities for vital military information to leak out. So the US created a new agency where they would tap in and monitor hundreds of thousands of civilian telegrams and phone calls flowing through both the mail, but also through these submarine cables. I mean, think about it. It was a scary time. It was global war, it was mass destruction. So mass surveillance on your people felt necessary in the name right. of national security. Even the insides of envelopes are scrutinized for hidden writing by these sensors. This agency was shut down after World War II, but the seeds of mass surveillance were now planted. Yeah, one, once they do a it, once they can later, see what, what works and President Harry shit. Truman creates a new secret department, the National Security Agency, or NSA. Their job was to secretly collect and analyze communication happening in the country. Communication that was not meant for them. Spying on communication of all kinds all in the name of national security. Yeah. I'm completely about this. the United States the Soviet Union are locked in a cold war, spying becomes even more valuable, even more of a priority for these governments. And once again, underwater cables become a target. The Americans built this entire spy submarine, which had a secret space set aside for intelligence officers and a giant computer. Chat, I guess I don't know. I have no thing about this. Because one part of me says, well, dude, unless you're plotting some insane, crazy, boom, whatever, dude, like, you should be chilling, right? They called this space the Bat Cave. Of course they did. A bunch of like military dudes Slippery on slope. a submarine and they've got their like secret like computers like we're in the Bat Cave. I can totally see it. This submarine called the USS Halibut had a little mini submarine looking thing that was actually not a mini submarine, but rather a pressurized chamber full of special gas that divers would just sit in there and breathe. It was pressurized to feel like the deep ocean so that these divers could go out into the ocean and be 400 feet under the surface and their bodies were ready for the pressure. Oh. They used this to secretly navigate to underwater cables. The one we know about happened over here, right off the coast of Eastern Russia. The divers would leave their pressurized gas chamber. They would navigate this big clunky electric listening device onto the cable. It's basically a giant 20 foot recorder that would tap into the cable and record everything passing through. They somehow parsed through the dozens of different signals, specific phone calls between Soviet officials. But of course- Chat, when they're, when they're cutting the wire as they're doing it, they wouldn't, wouldn't the enemy see a, 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 a lag or miscom while it's happening that can only be, oh, the wire got tampered with? Of course, this is like the analog days. So the storage on this device would fill up so they had to go back with their little bat cave submarine every few months to replace the tape. They did this 
for 10 years. Oh, this was called Operation around it. Ivy Bells. And we talked about it a little bit in the whole deep dive we did on submarines. But boy, it just like never ceases to blow my mind how resource intensive this operation was. I mean, it's massive advantage though. Anyway, through this tapping on the Soviet cable, the Americans learned just how scared the Soviets were by the buildup of nuclear weapons. This helped them negotiate a slowdown in the nuclear arms race, and even helped lead to the end of the Cold War, according to one expert. By the early 90s, the Cold War was over. The change of centuries, the dawning of a new millennium. It's why it was so vulnerable. A world changing attack into the ultra connected internet age. This new law that I signed today will allow surveillance of all communications used by terrorists, including emails, the internet, and cell phones. This government will enforce this law with all the urgency of a nation at war. It is now my honor to sign into law the yeah, USA but, Patriot Act. Yeah, but how are we gonna see if the person is a terrorist or not? Of 2001. In 2006, a leaked document revealed that in a nondescript building in San Francisco, behind this random yellow huh? door labeled 640. Well, I mean, chat, isn't that literally the description of Fruit of the Poisonous Tree? Literally? It's like, oh, we're gonna look for evidence, right? And if we find it, well, you were that, so we get to do it. It's like, okay, one well, A. You the have... NSA had set up this harmless looking box that tapped into the fiber optic cables that traversed the Pacific Ocean into Asia. The phone company AT&T had agreed to let them siphon off the traffic that was moving through their cables. This seemed kind of nuts that the US was tapping a cable where all of our communication goes through, but we had no idea what was coming. In 2013, Edward Snowden, an NSA contractor, unleashed one of the biggest leaks in American history. This is the greatest hemorrhaging of a legitimate American secrets in the history of the Republic. And that is what we have been looking through. I mean, there's a lot more documents, but we sifted through and found the documents that show us that it wasn't just one cable in San Francisco being tapped. The NSA was targeting every single cable that touched the United States. A huge amount of global traffic, email, text messages, phone calls. Global. They had cooperation from all these telecommunication and tech companies to do this. Microsoft, Yahoo, Google, Facebook, PalTalk? Yeah, yeah, my old Skype? What the hell is PalTalk? Who knows, but the NSA was tapping their cables. <laughs> YouTube, Skype, AOL, and even Apple by 2012. And their goal in all of this? Well, according to one of these slides, the goal was to sniff it all, know it all, collect it all, process it all, exploit it all, partner it all. In other words, according to another leaked slide, to master the internet. There's this one spreadsheet in all of these leaked documents that really says it, here it is. This is a list, a spreadsheet of some of the- Dude, imagine you work over there, chat, you're like an operative of this, and you have the system, chat. It scares, it's like Batman, Lucius Fox. It's like a system, dude. It's like a, it's like a candy store. You can do anything you can, you want. Cables that the NSA had access to. Like we literally know which ones. I mean, we have the data of all of these cables. We could literally map all of these. From the Southern Cross cable that connects California to Australia. Kind of fun. To the Apollo cable that connects New York to France. To the tiny cables that connect Puerto Rico to the British Virgin Islands. All in all, by 2009, the NSA had stuck a probe in hundreds of submarine cables all around the globe. Oh, and they didn't do it alone. The NSA partnered with the OG masters of cable tapping, the British. Since the 1940s, GCHQ and its American equivalents have had a relationship that is unique in the world. Okay, so there's a weird loophole thing here. U.S. law allows the NSA to track anyone outside of the United States, but there are restrictions when it comes to tracking American citizens. So to get around that, they turn to their British counterparts, the GCHQ. So over the course of a couple years in the early 2010s, the NSA is paying 100 million pounds in secret money to gain access to all of this data. This data that they call a gold mine to exploit. Hundreds oh. of thousands of names, over 76,000 geo coordinates, 194 million messages collected per day. And unlike the NSA, 
the British could actually spy on American targets. But the point is, they were in it to collect it all. If information arrives in the UK from the United States, well, it's governed by our laws. The system works as intended. Okay, okay, yeah, it's a lot of data, but what can you do with 600 million phone events worth of data? Like, that's I mean, way too much for any you, human you, you to actually filter it process. Out. And this is where it gets kind of nuts to me. We've got this you slide, it. which by the way, I know that we're like dealing with like really like top secret documents, but like, they all have like clip art and these like templatized Windows 95 looking titles. Freaking love it. This slide. This complicated wonky wonky slide with this flow chart is the answer to what they do with all of this data. But here's basically how it works. So that the NSA leaked. gets all of this. Bro, all this was leaked? Like from, from internal all the way out? Is that the Snowden guy? Is the Snowden guy who did that? That is insane. Data of all of our communication, either from cables or from phone companies. They funnel it through the central processing facility called Pinecone. This is presumably where they're processing a lot of this data and trying to find patterns. The NSA says that their job is to find suspected terrorists or other people who want to do harm to national security. And to do this, they use computers and algorithms to make links between suspected terrorists and their immediate network, the people they call, the people they talk to, where they are. Nice they say energy. they only hold on to those records and they throw out everything else. We don't know if that's true, but let's just assume it is. And then once it's all processed and sorted, it goes into a little searchable database right. called X Key Score, which is a very clunky name, but I swear, dude, dude, I bet my everything I have in the world, like I bet it, they have my cock somewhere. They have it. They, they have multiple, they have multiple of it. Multiple. Hey, great graphic design once again. This is basically like an internal you know search engine that Catalogs all That's of fine. the metadata that has been assigned to all of this call, message, geolocation information and makes it searchable. So you could pull up a person, a suspected terrorist, and you could find everything you need to know about who they talk to, where they are, what their emails say, yeah, or in their words, anything you wish to extract. It's all searchable on this convenient platform. This allows them to do searches like Let's look for an Arabic font Google query coming out of the tribal areas of Pakistan. And Ooh. boom, they're linked in. It's all right here in X key score, the database. Because of the globally connected world, the NSA now has access to this person. They can see what messages they're sending. They can see where they are right now, assuming they have their phone. All searchable in this convenient database, accessible to agencies from other countries and all over the world. The whole assumption here is that in order to find your target, chat, chat. the terror. Yeah, yeah, they look at me, chat, and they'll be like, dude, this guy's been home every day for like eight months. Something is wrong, dude. He hasn't moved for one inch. Rest what the, the fuck spy, is going on whatever. here, dude? You need to access all of the information. This turns metadata into a weapon of modern warfare. We kill people based on metadata. But that's not what we do with this metadata. This revelation, all of these documents, this whole Snowden drama was a big deal for a lot of reasons. One of the things it did is it made the location of cables really important. Most of the cables were going through the United States. But after this leak, countries started to look for alternative routes that bypassed the United States. Like this one that connects Brazil to South Africa and then goes on to Asia. So over the last decade since these leaks, the US has become less and less the epicenter of cable connection. And you guessed it, there's another player in town who wants access to cables, China. China is rapidly building out their worldwide network of cables. I mean, and they're doing this through Chinese state owned companies like Huawei. And this is adding yet another front in this emerging Cold War tension between position. great powers that want to lead the global system. It turns out that controlling and spying on cables is a requirement for global leadership in 2023. Who knew? 
But unlike the US, who purports to protect privacy and civil liberties, but secretly violates them, China doesn't even pretend. They don't give a fuck. China yeah, has built a say. society off of mass surveillance and control of information. Like, I mean, dude, they could go all in. What are the, what are the, what are the squad gonna do? Vote for somebody else? What the Here's fuck? Here's actual footage what are they gonna of how do? China tracks the movement of its population through visual recognition, <laughs> through cataloging every face, every car. Information is power in this day and age. And just a couple years ago, the US formed a new special unit with intelligence and regulation officials. It's a group called Team Telecom, and their job is- Oh, they have democracy more on it. Oh shit, my bad. Oh fuck. Shit, dude, I have no, I have no idea. To assess any new projects, any new cables, and make sure that they aren't going to threaten or weaken US interests. For example, there was this one cable that was supposed to connect LA to Hong Kong. It was being built by like Google and Facebook, and they were like into the project, hundreds of millions of dollars into the project, and this team telecoms shut it down. Too risky. We can't have our fiber optic cables going too close to China, lest they spy on us. This is making the map look really weird. You used to only have to have like one major set of cables connecting countries, but now you're starting to see duplicates, the Chinese lines and the American lines, each building out their own network, not connecting to each other. It's like the perfect symbol of the tension that is Until rising you do between these together. superpowers, the bifurcated world that we're moving into. China is connecting these small remote islands laying down cables. And these islanders are happy to have fast internet, even if it comes from China and is probably being tapped. The continent of Africa, the US and China are both laying down competing well, lines. Off, uh. The countries caught in the middle of this understand what's going on. Two aspiring hegemons vying for power, each involved in spying and sucking up information in their own way. But I guess it's worth it because it means faster internet. It means connection to the world. Russia is even trying to get in on this with their aptly named Polar Express Cable. And even though the old school tapping into cables in the middle- Wait, what is Wire doing? Connecting fucking Siberia to Antarctica to Greenland or some shit? Polar what? Express what even Cable. What is this Wire doing and anyway? even though the old school- From a block of ice to some another block of snow? Tapping into cables in the middle of the ocean to spy on your neighbor what? is kind of outdated it. now. There's some evidence that Russia might be still doing this. They've got this one yeah, ship it's called the Yantar. Yeah, it's still it's a surface ship that got is it. generally cold. understood to be a spy vessel. And it's been spotted on the surface above where we know submarine cables are, near Ireland or near Syria. Some think that they're just tapping into them like the old days. Maybe using one of these like mini submarines. But even if they're not tapping into them, their very presence above the cable is kind of a threat. They could cut this cable at any moment. The US, who is very good at submarines, has its own spy vessels. The most secretive one being the USS Jimmy Carter. And we have no idea Jack, what it's up to. Jack, couldn't you literally just like send like drone submarines or something like that? That send some really weird sabotage troll machine that drops into the cable and just claps it, dude? You could just- Security experts well, speculate could, that it's probably all the wires tapping up. into it, cables easy. for some reason somewhere at the bottom of the ocean. But a lot of people in the industry are like, no, that's like so old days. Why bother? It's so much easier to just tap into them on land. You get way more data and you don't have to go to the bottom of the ocean. Meanwhile, the private companies in charge of these cables have started to up their own defenses. They're taking all these extra precautions, including sending out these like submarine drones that just spend their time tracing along the bottom of the ocean babysitting these cables and making sure that there's no damage or tampering going on. Oh my God! So I feel like I'm gonna say what I've said a bunch on the channel lately, which is we are entering a new chapter in geopolitics. A globalized world is hyper-connected, but suddenly and unexpectedly, we're seeing a new set of divisions. Countries not trusting- You guys have pre-watched that? Guys, guys, if I was smart, okay, and I had a degree, I will do all that shit, okay? I, I get these ideas in my head, they spawn in, and they're better than yours, yo. Get mauled. Get each mauled. Other anymore. You're mauled. Nations wanting to create their own separate systems, both economically, militarily, but also with the infrastructure of the internet. A chapter where countries now are more skeptical than ever, especially great powers. Great powers that are building their own infrastructure so that they can communicate and control information not trusting the other half of the world to handle their data. We see navies with secret ships that cost close to a billion dollars a piece. And then we see everyone else caught in the middle. Chat. And in the end- Chat, this is the thought I had, okay, chat, last pause, get a pause. Chat, I feel like as 
the nicer we get, right? And the more the more human rights we get, right? And the more like like oh dude, be green, don't use this, don't use that, right? The more other countries don't give a fuck, ramp up the juice, right? We're slowing down, they ramp up, and at one point, we're just gonna get dominated. No. Most of us just want fast internet. Because they don't give a fuck. Connection with friends around the world, and a feeling that we're safe. Thanks I enjoyed that. Today's Thanks video. For Thanks for watching it. Just a little nugget here. We we did this video because I'll watch we did a guy the thing. deep dive on submarines a few months ago. I don't know if anyone saw that, but it was in that reporting that we came across the the spying element of all of this. And I remember I asked all of you, "Do you want me to do this?" Kind of looking like a dick. You see? I like that. Look at this it. Video and you all Sorry said yes. I got like so many comments that were like yes. And so we did it. And that is one thing I love about YouTube and being an independent journalist on YouTube is that I get to just ask. What's that? Chat. It's a whole movie. Do I get to watch it for free or not? Do I give me a bum? I'll play with Jessa. Yo, this is X. X on yeah. the beat, yo. Okay. Why you ruin my voice as well? That S. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy. Anyone knows that boy? I don't know, he's just so soy.